What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here, Unsleeved Media, and I've been thinking a lot, thinking a lot about the local game store. Now, many local game stores out there survive without additional support from, say, Wizards of the Coast for their Magic the Gathering products. Uh, but the vast majority stand alone, uh, needing some support, needing prize support, needing organized play for reasons uh, to come into the store. In the 2000s, we talked about early 2000s, late 90s, we talked about the Walmart effect on local business, right? I think local game stores survive that mostly because, uh, yeah, you could get some stuff at Walmart. So I guess nowadays you can get magic cards at Walmart. But a lot of the high-end board games or other trading card games, you just weren't going to get at a Walmart. You had to go to a local game store. Then in you know maybe 2010, I think we started to see the full impact of the Amazon effect, meaning now... Um, Things that you would never get at Walmart, like Legend of the Five Rings or Star Wars Destiny or Legendary Encounters or, um, you know, Munchkin TCG has now become readily available to people, many people with free same day shipping. I happen to live in an area where most of the items I order from Amazon are free same day or free one day. And unless I want it right this second, <laughs> that's pretty tolerable. They used to survive because shipping would take a long time, you know, five to seven business days or something. Those days are gone. You can get almost anything same day or next day at better pricing than your local game store. So are they going the way of Blockbuster, of Spencer's Gifts? The answer, in my opinion, is yes. There are things that they can do to hold off. And the good local game stores do that. One, by curating a strong, loyal playgroup customer base. This is the best way. Uh, but even the best local game stores still have to deal with Amazon and other things in terms of pricing. So they have to look at ways they can add value uh, for people outside of price and availability because these are no longer things they can compete on. Being able to host pre-release for Magic the Gathering is an important, very, very important aspect to keeping those places full, introducing people to organized play and things of that matter. The professional scene is important. PPTQs, Friday Night Magic, competitive magic play keeps butts in seats. What else can they do? Well, I've seen a lot of stores offer food and snacks and things like that. And that's okay. That's something every store should do. I've seen stores selling more merchandise things, pop figures. A lot of local game stores have kind of gone the way of just these tchotchke stores, you know, Rick and Morty, uh, garbage, you know, Chineseium products, um, plush, stuff like that. And I don't blame them for that either. I think you have to know your customers. You have to figure out a way to sell something or provide a service that nobody else does. For example, if you're a comic book shop, what are you even doing these days, right? You have people coming in to look at a pull list maybe and to pick up their comics if you're lucky. And that's about it. So you sell things like hero clicks and you sell, you host a little organized play. But I think there are other ways to connect with your fans. What if, like, you know how Pandora works with music, where you put a few songs in that you like, and then they serve up uh, songs that you should like based on some algorithm. Well, if you're a smart local game shop, maybe you're having some sort of monthly crate or club or something like that that you give to people, sign people up, uh, things that they would like. Hey, if you like this type of TCG, here's some cool stuff. Why should all the internet companies be doing all these loot crates and stuff like that? There's no reason a local game store who understands their customer base, uh, who understands what people like, who understands the value and what price they can sell things at, um, couldn't do a better job. Uh, hosting events in other places is exciting. My local game shop, 
actually hosts some events at a retro arcade. It's freaking awesome. Go there and play like Turtles in Time, original Mortal Kombat in between rounds of pre-release. It's awesome. Genius move, Bob. Uh, Too bad I can't attend pre-release anymore, but that's neither here nor there. Local game stores, in my opinion, are not run by titans of industry. They're run by fans, and many of their customers don't have deep pockets, and they aren't always loyal. So how can they avoid going the way of Blockbuster, the way of um, Hot Topic, Spencer's Gifts? I'm hoping that this video can start a conversation in the comment section about things that we think comic book stores and local game stores could do. Because let's be honest, for a lot of us, a local game store is a safe haven, is a place where we go to be introduced to new games, introduced to new hobbies. I don't want to see them selling fidget spinners. I want to go in there and I want to see new games or I want to see something interesting. I can buy sleeves anywhere. I can buy them in bulk. But what are game stores going to do when Magic the Gathering, for example, moves completely to a digital product? They're already proving that they're willing to compete with the Friday Night Magic model um, by uh, running their Break the Servers event during FNM. What, you know, many of you in the comment section always tell me, well, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. My local game store is crushing it. Tell me how. How are they doing it? Because part of the problem with local game stores is they don't have a lot of money to make a mistake. So they can try something new. They can get something in new. But if they don't succeed in selling it, they're fire selling it on eBay. And that's probably two months worth of their expendable cash in most cases. And you have all major YouTubers basically endorsing internet powerhouses like Card Kingdom and TCG Player. So gone are the days of the local game shop being able to make money selling singles. They can still buy the occasional collection, but that's getting rarer and rarer, more rare uh, with each year because people are getting comfortable using buy lists, sending that sort of thing in. I'm worried for local game stores. They've never been a huge profit center. They've never been this uh, place. You can tell I'm kind of emotional about it. I, I feel bad for local game stores. When, when, I, when my channel was at the height of its popularity, and it's actually regaining that now, which I'm so thankful for all of you always liking the videos and sharing them. We're coming back. We're growing again. But it makes me sad to think of what the inevitable future is. I mean, they're GameStop, right? They offer no pa reasonable value other than, a, other than a place to go pick something up. And I don't want to see them go extinct because they played such an important part in me getting into Magic the Gathering and me getting into role-playing games, me getting into D&D. I mean, this is how, this is how I learned. Somebody saying, hey, come on over, we need a fourth. Hey, do you know how to play ADH? No. Hey, borrow one of my decks. We just want four. Or we need, we know we need three or four people. Come play. You're not going to run into that in many places once you're outside of high school. And it's my hope that this channel, you know, as I start covering other games now, when I go to Gen Con and make more connections with game developers that want their companies to remain apolitical and just make great games. I'm hoping that I can pick up where some of these local game stores fell off by showing you more games like Zombie Side, which I haven't opened yet, Legendary Encounters, stuff like that. Because when you walk into a game store and you see a wall of hundreds of board games, you need an expert. You need someone to tell you what's cool, what's what are people playing, what's what's interesting. Maybe they could run some sort of board game rental service. Um that might be interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm really asking for your help out there in the comment section down below. Let's talk about how to save the local game store. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm going to leave you with try to think of your fondest memory at a local game store because hopefully that will inspire you to uh, get those creative juices flowing.